videos, I want to take you through a, a prove it session. So I've created a functional specification. I have an existing unified namespace. I've created a functional specification. I'm going to walk you through. I'm going to tell you how long it took and, and the whole nine. All right, prove so. it 2025 is a go and what to expect. Take zero. All right. In this video real quick, obviously we have launched the early access uh, this morning at 8 a.m. Uh, we provided for early access signups for mastermind and mentorship members for Prove It 2025, which will take place February 18th to the 20th at the Western Gallery in Dallas, Texas, the Western Gallery Conference Center in Dallas, Texas. Those announcements went out this morning, but this video, my goal is to kind of go over what to expect. So I'm going to do a mini Prove It session. I had to try to put something together and I'm going to use actual data. So I'm going to, I'm going to do a mini Prove It session here in a second. I'm going to do it in 10 minutes instead of the 30 to 45 minutes that the vendors are going to have. We've gotten um, the feedback for Prove It has been overwhelming. We're definitely going to run out of space to answer a couple of questions. When we set out to do this conference, I talked to a bunch of people who did a conference for the very first time. And I said, what did you learn? What do you wish you had known the first time you did it that you didn't know? Most people did conferences that were around 100 people. So they were really, really tiny, low capital investment, you know, low risk. We are definitely not going that way. We're going big. We found out when that our conference will be in the top 5% of conferences in terms of size. So when you have 500 people at a conference, that's, that's actually a really big conference. The vast majority of conferences are in the, around the 100 to 200 people range. And to answer some questions like how we're even doing this, I'm putting up about $350,000 to do this conference of my money. Our plan is to cover our expenses through sponsorship, of which 4.0 Solutions and Intellic Integration will both be sponsors of the show, and they'll both put money into the conference. And then we'll have we'll have about 25 vendor sponsors who are gonna, you know, through their contributions, will cover our costs. And then the ticket, the ticket sales to the attendees is gonna help fund the next year's conference. So our plan is to move to a to increase the size each year and to move to a bigger venue. So the Weston Gallery is an incredible place. It's perfect for, for 500 people. Our plan was we're gonna plan 500, but we wanna have the ability to go as high as 750. So we do have that ability to scale up. So we're going to sell 500 tickets to, to attendees, primarily end users. We're actually, end users are going to get a special discount. So end users are going to, are going to pay less to come to the show. The idea is to get manufacturers to come see how digital transformation actually works. So our primary focus is end users. We're going to have systems integrators. We're going to have software and hardware OEMs that will both be a combination of attendees and sponsors because we're going to run out of the, the sponsor space. We already have our floor layout, which we're going to share when we go to wide release next week. So seven days from now, we're going to go wide. Okay. But I, what I wanted to do was I, for between now and next Monday, mastermind and mentorship members, they have a special link that they received an email that they can sign up for at a, at a, I think they're getting 50% off the, the, actual ticket price. All of our expenses and stuff will be fully transparent to mastermind and mentorship. We'll actually show you guys the numbers, the whole numbers. But what I wanted to do in the, the remaining of this video is I want to take you through a, a prove it session. So I, I've created a functional specification. I have an existing unified namespace. I've created a functional specification. I'm going to walk you through. I'm going to tell you how long it took and, and the whole nine. All right. So if you want to check out the Prove It Conference website, you can go to proveitconference.com. There's a introductory video in there that I shot, I don't know, a few weeks ago. And then if you want to see the general schedule, which is right here, day one, day two, and day three. If you're asking why do we have registration on day two, there are people who might not be able to come until day two. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at what a Prove It session might look like. All right, so this is a functional space specification for a unified namespace solution. So the overview, this document outlines the functional requirements for implementing a UNS solution using EMQX, MySQL, BigQuery, and Looker Studio Pro. BigQuery and Looker Studio Pro are warehouse and visualization from Google. This actual solution is going to be done with Google, AWS, and Azure long term. Right now, I'm going to show you the Google solution. The solution aims to integrate and synchronize data across these platforms to provide real-time dashboards and ensure data consistency within a 24-hour window. I'm actually going to show you how we're doing that syncing. So the primary functional goals in, in my Prove It session, my goal was to, we're using the Intellic integration, unified namespace, and backend. 
So there is a UNS that I, I've showed many times before. I'll show a screenshot of it here in a second. There's a unified namespace that Intellic uses that's they've been, that Intellic's been using since 2016, 2017. The event changes or the raw event changes when we add a project or we add a new client or we add an invoice or we add a new employee or an employee enters a, um, charges their time against a task. All of those events go through our unified namespace. And then from the UNS, we store them in a database backend. There is a master data model inside the MySQL backend that basically pieces all pieces everything together, shows the relationship between a client, a project, a task, and a time entry, but the events themselves go through a unified namespace. So primarily we want to, in this case, I wanna build dashboards inside of Looker Studio Pro, inside of Google, where I show clients over time, projects over time, billable hours over time, billable team over time and receivables over time, okay? The objectives we want to do, and it's re it's not rece total receivables, it's receivables from billable hours. And essentially what I want to do, we have a primary goal in our organization. With each iteration with a customer, we want them to get, if it takes N number of hours to do phase one of the project to get X value, then what we really want to do is get X times a multiplier in phase two for one half N over time. So what we should see is clients going up, projects holding flat, relatively flat, and hours not growing at the same rate as projects and clients. That's what we should see if, if we're achieving our goal. Um, we also want that to be in real time. So we don't want to just extract that from a back end and run a report. I want to be able to refresh the data in the report. And during 2024, as 2024 is going on, I want to be able to see where I am in 2024 relative to where I was between 2016 and 2023, which are completed years. Okay. So we have to do a few things in order to achieve this. We've got to do data integration, real-time monitoring, data synchronization, data visualization. And, and here are some of the requirements. We're going to we use EMQX as our MQTT broker. We used to use Mosquito. We switched to EMQX when EMQX came out. We use MySQL as our local database. So that is the database that runs in the organization. We're using BigQuery as our data warehouse in Google. We're using Looker Studio Pro for our dashboards. And we're using Node-RED or some other tool like HiByte for data operations. Okay. And then it also explains the functional specs explains the data we have available. So we have under contribution, we have a daily summary, which has improved hours by day data set, scorecard by day data set, description, time entries yesterday. We have open projects, total remaining hours, you know, all the financials. We have staff, and then we have some scorecards. Okay. And then we have some data requirements that tells us how we're going to build this. That's the functional specification. All right. Let's get into the integration itself. All right, so this is what the unified namespace looks like at Intellic. Okay, so there's a relationship between the unified namespace and the back end. Okay, so we're going to start with the unified namespace. You'll see that the UNS contains raw events that go into the database and information models that we extract from the database. This is the raw database that's 10 years old, so there's lots of stuff in here. There are, ta there are tables in here that are deprecated, but we have the key client, there are key tables, seven key tables that we need in order to build our reports. This UNS and this database have been in sync with one another for nine or 10 years. What we're adding is this database. So what we're doing is we're, we've created, I created some business logic inside of Node-RED. I chose to use Node-RED in this case because a lot of people have been using it. And I also want to go and use FlowFuse to show how to horizontally scale this. So this is one step one in a, in a much larger implementation. But we basically, every 24 hours, we run a sync across the seven tables and those seven tables sync inside a BigQuery. So our, day, our real time in BigQuery is at the 24 hour window. I could make it much faster. I could check it every five minutes if I wanted to. What we did is we looked at how often time entries update, how often projects update, how often clients update. And then we said, we're gonna do this every 24 hours. I may move it back to 12, I may move it back to every one hour, which is the kind of resolution I type, I'd like. And then what we did was once the data is synced, then what we do is we take those data sources, we write some queries, and we have build a report inside of Looker Studio Pro. So that report is cover page, clients over time, projects over time, billable hours over time, billable team over time, and receivables over time. The front page tells us what's on each page. So each page contains, in this case, we have clients by year. So from 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
21, 22, 23, and 24. We saw a huge spike between 20 and 21, and that was primarily because of COVID. We had been very, we had gradual growth with clients. Remember, we were we would accept one out of every 12 clients that came in, and we still do, about one out of 12. The difference, this growth here, this growth right here, came from the total number of clients that were reaching out to us for help increased exponentially because of COVID. And then what we did was we worked from 2021 to 2024 to get back on that same growth curve that we had been on. If you look now, we are still way ahead of the curve. But that we, we should end up being somewhere around in here by the end of 2024 with this being June 10th. Okay, So that would put us back on that normal growth curve and take out this spike. All right, client, this is a client breakdown by month from February 16th. So we can see across the year when the spikes are, and I can, with Looker Studio Pro, I, we can actually pivot this data and analyze this data in real time. I can look and see what the individual values are. I can zoom in. I can zoom in by dimension, et cetera, et cetera. Active projects, you will notice as clients go up, active projects have held relatively steady. And what we're trying to do there is we're trying to get the projects done faster. We're working with more clients, getting projects done faster, and doing larger projects. Active projects by month, same thing. This is billable hours. So this is just engineering hours. This is not any other revenue stream at Intellic. And you'll notice, with the exception of 2021 to 2023, where we had that huge spike of clients and it took us two years to get all that work done, we have held our billable hours steady, even though the company has grown, the number of clients that we're impacting has increased drastically. We have held the hours steady, which is what we should be doing if we're getting deeper into our project. So if we're getting into phase three, phase four, where we're getting you know a multiplier of N value for, or multiplier of X value for one half N hours, you want fewer hours for more value as you're getting deeper and deeper into a digital transformation implementation. And then this is the billable hour breakdown by month. This is the total number of billable team. Okay, so the bottom here is not zero. It's actually ranged to the, the bottom. I think this bottom is maybe nine, eight maybe. But this is the team over time. And what we're trying to do is bring that back down, the number of engineers we need to do the work lower. And then billable team by month. And then receivables, which should be commensurate with the hours. All right. And then what did we end up doing? I have a sync that runs in Node Red where we pull from MySQL, we query and compare, we insert new records, we update the change rows, we publish the status, we insert into BigQuery, we pull the data, and we flop it in the dashboards. All right, total amount of time took 16 hours start to finish. The total expenditure was a little over $2,000. That's what a prove it session looks like. We'll see you guys at the conference.